Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise this is the day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be what? Glad, Glad in it. So now she has a joyful event, praising God on this first Sunday of November 2020. Praise God.
go to the throne of grace, led by Brother Archie Gaffer. Father, and in once more and again, hear a few of your humble servants bow, bow around the footstool of servant mercy, trying, trying to turn thee some things, and we realize, Father, that you are God, and besides there's no other. And please, please, Father, look down upon us this morning, my Father, with the eye of pity and mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy on these old souls this morning. And oh, Father, oh, Father, now we pause to just praise your holy name and not only praising you but we thank you father for your awesome grace and mercy and whoa, we thank you father for another day's journey father now we're calling on your name this morning uh, because someone needs you this morning. Uh, we all need you this morning, Father. Uh, uh, someone is worried uh, about a mother this morning. And uh, whoa, someone is worried uh, about a father this morning. Uh, someone is worried. Uh, about the children this morning and oh someone is worried uh, about a loved one this morning now we're calling on you father because i know you brought us from a mighty long way uh, we've been sick sometimes and uh, you brought us uh, we've been in trouble, and you brought us. We've been lost sometimes, and uh, you found us. Uh, we've been confused sometimes, and you gave us directions. And whoa, we're so glad this morning uh, you brought us from a mighty long ways. And now uh, when, Father, when, Father, and oh, when, 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 Father, now when every knee must bow and now uh, every tongue must confess, uh, church, we have got somewhere. Uh, church, we have got somewhere. Uh, church, we've got somewhere uh, to lay our heads uh, when it's all over. And oh, when, 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 Father, now uh, when the church bell has tongue for the last time when father and oh when 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 father now when the hymn book has closed for the last time when father and oh when 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 father when we go in our rooms, yes. 
and we're not coming out no more. Receive our souls, Father, and thy kingdom, where we can praise your holy and righteous name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, 
whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry, thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the 23rd chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. And it reads, then, then, then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. And they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And love the uttermost rooms at the feast and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he shall humble himself shall be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Summary of the Decalogue. And hear what Christ our Savior said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father.
You've raised the dead. 5,000 hungry soldiers fed. We know you can do it, God. So go by and see about them. And whatever you got left, God, don't forget about your children here in Mount Zion. Bless abundantly in this space right now. Those who need to hear from you, God, struggle with some issue. So right now, God, bless parents and bless children. Bless brothers and bless sisters. Bless parents and bless husbands and bless wives. Oh, God, right now, bring love into the equation once again. And if you do that, we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, to give you the honor, and to give you the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
But let the church say amen. 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 Church say amen again. Amen. amen. Now, if you want Jesus to walk with you, put your hands together. Amen. 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 We praise God for our music ministry. For yeah. Bishop Marshall and for Brother Blake. Yeah. Uh, and for the leader simple choir for, or, or four ten or whatever we got going on with music. We thank you for being here for what you've done in this worship experience today. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, and I'm going to read verses 11 through verses 14. 1 Kings, 19th chapter, verses 11 through verses 14. Hear ye the word of the Lord. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. We want to concentrate on that 14th verse. that said, he answered, I have been zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Just for a very few minutes, my father's children, pray with me from this, this topic, how to face your fears. How to face your fears. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we gather asking your presence in this place. We can't do nothing till your Holy Spirit comes, God. I can't utter a word until you send the Holy Spirit. So, Father, allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within our hearts that we may be able to understand you better. Grant me your preaching power. We'll be ever careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How to face your fears. A few years ago, there was a well-known television circus show that featured a Bengal tiger act. Like the rest of the show, the act was done live before a large audience. One evening, the tiger trainer went into the cage with several tigers to do a routine performance. The door was locked behind him. The spotlights highlighted the cage. Television cameras moved in close, and the audience watched in suspense as the trainers skillfully put the tigers through their paces. In the middle of the performance, the worst possible fate occurred. The lights went out. For 20 or 30 long seconds, very long seconds, the trainer was locked in the cage with the tigers. The tigers could see him, but he could not see them. A whip and a small kitchen chair seemed a meager protection under the circumstances. But somehow he survived. And when the lights came on, he calmly finished the performance. In the post-performance interview, he was asked how he felt knowing the Tigers had this sight advantage. After admitting the fear of the situation, he pointed out that the Tigers had no idea 
that he could not see them. He said, I just kept cracking my whip and talking to them until the lights came on. They never knew they had the advantage. Well, this experience gives us a very clear picture about life. You see, at some point in all of our lives, we face the terrifying task of fighting some tigers in the dark. <laughs> For some, it's a constant battle. Some cope daily with internal problems that can destroy them. They, they cannot visualize their problems or understand them, but their problems seem to have them zeroed in. Well, what are the tigers in your life? Things that go bump in the night and cause us to lose sleep. Things that we perceive have the potential to destroy us. And that's essentially what fear is, isn't it? Something that we perceive has the potential to destroy us. And whether the tigers are real, as in the case of the story, or famous of our imagination is not the point. If we perceive them to be real, then as the old saying goes, perception then becomes reality, doesn't it? Well, fear is fear, and, and if a person is afraid of something or, or someone, that fear can be just as immobilizing and paralyzing and potentially self-destructive, whether the tiger is real or imaginary. Telling somebody not to be afraid won't solve the problem, will it? People are afraid not because they desire to be afraid, because, but because they do not know how not to be afraid. If they knew how not to be afraid, then they wouldn't be afraid, would they? People who have phobias or fear of certain things like heights, closed in places, all animals or certain animals, people in general, all certain people, the future, the failure, water, flying, driving, storms, death, and so on, they don't want to be afraid of certain things. They just don't know how not to be afraid. Telling someone that he or she has nothing to fear does not solve the problem because fear has its own logic, doesn't it? A royal Bengal tiger kept in a private zoo exhibited the greatest fear at the sight of a mouse. If the mouse moved about, the tiger ran or sprang away as if, I dread, as if in dread of destruction. The tiger had the ability to crush the mouse with one swing of his paw, but the tiger's fear blocked out all logic blinded him to the truth. I've come to tell you today, fear can distort reality, can it? It can deaden you to common sense. It, it, it can deaden your reasonable faculties, and it can blind you to the truth. You cannot see things as they are, except through your fear. <clears throat> Telling someone that he or she has nothing to fear, but fear itself might be good rhetoric, but it's bad medicine. Because fear itself is a deadly enemy that can destroy you. According to an ancient legend, a man driving by carriage to another country was stopped by an old woman who asked him for a ride. He took her up beside him, and as they drove along, he looked at her and became frightened and asked, who are you? The woman said, my name is Cholera. The man ordered the woman to walk, but she persuaded him to take her along as long as she would not kill more than five people at their destination. As a pledge to the promise, she gave him a dagger, saying to him that it was the only weapon that could kill her. Then she added, I will meet you in two days. If I break my promise, you can stab me. Well, 120 people eventually lost their lives to cholera. So the angry man who had driven her to the city and who held a dagger as a pledge that she would not kill more than five people went to look for her. When he met her, he raised a dagger to take her life, but she stopped him. She said, I only killed five. Fear killed the rest. Either we learn to control and live with our tigers in the dark, or they will control them soon and destroy us. So either we face our fears and fix them, or our fears will somehow fix us. This text is an illustration of this truth. You see, Elijah had won a great victory for God on Mount Carmel. He had outprayed 450 prophets and 400 prophets of Asherah, the Canaanite gods, had many followers but had no power. Elijah had prayed down fire from heaven on Mount Carmel. 
and then prayed rain down from the same skies to end the three-year trial. Even though the prophets of Bashar and Baal uh, and had Elijah hopelessly outnumbered, and even though they prayed from morning until evening, they had produced nothing but their own perspiration and their own fatigue. After the supremacy of God, the true and living God had been reestablished. The people who had gathered on Mount Carmel revolted against the prophets of Baal and Asherah. When King Ahab, who was present on Mount Carmel, told his queen Jezebel of Elijah's actions, she swore to exact revenge on Elijah by taking his life within 24 hours. And when Elijah caught wind of Jezebel's plans, this great man of God and persevering prayer warrior lost it all and fled to the wilderness for his very life. There are two things about Elijah's flight that should be noted. First, many folks have made much fuss about the fact that Elijah stood up to 450 men, 850 men, but ran away from one woman named Jezebel. There's a sermon in there somewhere, men. There's a sermon in there somewhere. Yeah. Logic would tell you that fear the 850 men makes sense because of the potential for, for loss of life and harm. But, and whether they did it or not is beside the point. In Elijah's mind, Jezebel was a much greater threat than these 450 men. You see, you can be bold about many things and brave before many faces and yet cower and panic before just one. In other words, you don't need a lot of tigers in the dark. Just one in your cage and you on the, get you on the run. Oh, no. People who tell you they're not afraid of anything are doing one of two things. They're either bluffing or they just have not met the right tiger. Right. Second thing is this. Elijah, who was the epitome of boldness and fearlessness, panicked and ran. Let me tell you something, folks. Everybody can lose it at some point, can't you? Right. No matter how many tigers you face and held your ground, the right tiger at the right moment can cause you to lose in Canada. If you've ever lost your control or lost your composure, if you've ever been pushed beyond your limits, if you've ever had a nervous breakdown, don't be embarrassed. Welcome to the club. Everybody loses it sometimes. At some point, at some time, in every way, we all lose it. Oh, I can hear you saying, I thought he was stronger than that. I thought he was stronger than that ordinarily. But when the right tiger came along at the right time, his strength was not normally what it used to be. You better know today. You better know that you got to sometimes lose it if you're going to make it. Yes. When Elijah ran, he ran to the right place, though, didn't he? He ran to Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. He ran to the arms of God. What do we do when we lose it? What do we do when fear overtakes faith? We run to God, don't we? Yes. There in Mount Horeb, God spoke to Elijah, not in the night of earthquake, wind, and fire, but in the gentleness, comfort, and communion of the still, small voice. As Elijah felt God's presence in silence, he was able to express his fears and his frustrations. He cried, enough is enough. <clears throat> I've had it. I, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left. I'm out to fight this battle all by myself, and they're trying to take my life away. Fear will make you feel like giving up sometimes, won't it? Sometimes you just get tired of fighting tigers, don't you? Yeah. Fighting tigers in schoolyards, fighting tigers on your job, fighting tigers in your home, fighting tigers in your church, Fighting pettiness and jealousy, fighting to make ends meet, fighting the racist justice system, fighting for the right to vote. Oh yeah, fighting, fighting, fighting. Enough is enough. I give up. Why try anymore? What saved Elijah was that when he panicked, he ran to the Lord, not to another unfulfilling and unrewarding binge or shopping or spending spree, but he ran to God. What well, saying Elijah was that when he had, when he said enough, he was talking to God and not to another human being who was just as confused and had just been a hang up as he had, but he ran to the man with the answers, he ran to God. The only way I know how to handle the tigers in the dark when panic is setting in and I don't know what, what, what to do, uh, I need to come before God and say, Father, I stretch. <laughs> My hand to thee, no other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me. 
Oh, whether thou, whether shall I go? I just say, God, here I am, your child. I can't handle these fears anymore. I don't know what else to do. I place my fear in your hand. I place myself in your hand. I place these tigers in your hand. You take them. Because I've had just about all I can take. And when we go to God in prayer, I want you to know something. The fear doesn't leave right away. There was a story of a well-known missionary in India who was praying at the side of his bed when a large snake lowered itself in the rafters of his bungalow and encircled his body with its cold and powerful coils. It made no attempt to constrict the man. Yet the missionary knew that if he struggled, the snake would tighten the coils and strangle him. With marvelous self-control and courage born of faith, he continued his prayer until the snake unwound itself and went back in the room. Sometimes as we pray, fears will attack us and wrap themselves around us even as we come to God in prayer. That's why we need to learn not only how to pray, but how to pray your way through. See, there's a difference between praying and praying through. Praying is talking to the Lord, but praying through is agonizing with the Lord. Praying through means that you pray until breakthrough comes, until you know you have the victory. When you're trying to overcome your fears, you are engaged in warfare, aren't you? One battle never wins a war. You keep fighting, and you keep fighting until on your knees over and over again until you feel the fear of fear release its hold and crawl back to the hole wherever it came from. To pray through is to be as determined to get your victory as fear is to overcome you and the devil is to defeat you. To break through is to say like Jacob, I won't let go until you bless me. I won't let go. I don't care how long it takes or how often I gotta come back to you or how many setbacks I have or how many tigers are in my cage. I know you can do it, God. Your promise never to leave me, never to forsake me. Now I'm claiming your promise. I'm gonna stay right here until my train comes. That's what it means to pray through. You pray through from sorrow to song. You pray from midnight to morning. You pray from tears to testimony. You pray from weeping to winning. Yeah, you got to pray. Pray your way through. Elijah prayed through in Mount Horeb and God spoke to him. God said, go. Return to Damascus, anoint my servants. They will carry out my commands. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel. When you pray through, you can face your tigers in the dark. They told the story of a father whose little girl was afraid of the dark. She was screaming whenever she feared the dark. He went into the room and looked down upon her bed, and she would just fall right back to sleep. See, so you can face your fears when you know who it is that's watching over you. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely and long for a heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. You can face your fears today. Say yeah. You can face your fears today. Say yeah. With God, I can do all things. Face your fears. God will make a way somehow. God will make a way for you. God will fight the enemies for you. God will. And God can. I'm not going to worry about my tomorrow because I know who holds my tomorrow. Oh, yeah, God is good and love is everlasting. Somebody say, yeah. Say, yeah. Be the better because of it. Don't be afraid of your tigers in the dark. Just remember, while you can't see them, they can't see you either. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.
take this time to open the doors of the church. How many can admit they've had some fears that caused them to run? They had some fears that caused them to panic. They had some fears that let that a lot of them not know which way to go. But God somehow steps in, doesn't he? Makes everything all right. One reason why he does it because he wants you to be a part of a Bible believing church. So if you're here today or through the various lines of communication and you're outside the ark of safety, you don't know today if your life were to end, would you be hell bound or heaven bound? So we offer you this opportunity to guarantee that, that the eternal life to you. All you gotta do is come and say, I yield. What must I do to be saved? We'll pray the prayer of confession with you. We'll work you into this Bible-believing church. You're here today. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? recognizing how good God has been and recognize that, that, that you just can't beat how good he's been and how much he gives to us. So we should not be worried about giving back to him a small portion of all he's given to us. So today, won't you consider your tithe? 10% that belongs to God. Won't you consider your support of our benevolence uh, offering and your support of our Bible discovery hour? Remember the organization you're a part of of the dues you may pay to those organizations. Remember also your uh, pledge or your assessment. We ask you, please, if you have not completed yet a pledge card, please complete that pledge card so that we'll know uh, that we can depend on your offering. I just want to let you know today that whatever you're going through, trust God and he'll make a way. So please prepare your offering and make your off your checks payable to Mount Zion Amy Church. You may feel free to bring those checks or cash to the church today between 9.30 and 11.30. You may also use our electronic giving app called Givelify and submit your offering that way. You may also bring your offering on Wednesday between 11 and 1. Someone is here at the church to receive those offerings. And if you just desire uh, any day to slip in our mail slot, I give it to you when we will get that fourth win. Just remember, your church needs your support. And God loves a cheerful giver. So please bring your offering before the Lord and allow God to do miraculous works in your life. All things come of thee, O Lord. Thank 
you so much for your gifts to Mount Zion AD Church. The announcements for the week, of course, our lifeline every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Not area code 951, the number 799-9505. Please join in for our prayer line every day of the week except Tuesdays and Sundays. In addition to that, I want to remind you that we have our um, uh, official board meeting uh, this coming Wednesday, November 4th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. And then we also have the first half of our church planning conference where, where uh, 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 those essential workers of the church will be put into service. Then we ask you to also join us on November the 9th, which is our first quarterly conference with our presiding elder. So please join in and be a part of that via the conference call line as well. And then on November 12th, we will conclude our church planning conference part two, where we will discuss our various uh, 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 programs and events for the year. So please join us uh, on those three occasions, February, I'm sorry, November the 4th, 9th, and the 12th. Uh, uh, in addition, please remember that we will have uh, I Know Your Church series again this coming Thursday. So please join us on a Zoom call in the conference call line for the Know Your Church series. Other than that, please go govern yourselves accordingly. We pray your blessings and that God will move in your lives. Thank you so very much. and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his most holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. General confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most recent have committed by thought, word, and deed against that divine majesty. The folk of all justice are wrath and indignation against us. We do want to repent, and our heart is sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with holy repentance and true faith turn unto thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm our faith and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, in whom our hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meek, right, and our abundant duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks to O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify that holy name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. 
Now, who will take the bread in your hand? When you consume the bread, between the life and death of Jesus, what he did on Calvary's cross. Who will now take your cup? In the blood of Jesus, won't you please drink? Amen, amen. We will recite together the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Charge in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. As the community, they got them and sang a hymn. I know it was the blood. I know it was a blood. I know it was a blood.
Christ, love of God and sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may the rest rule in the body, each of our hearts, henceforth and forevermore, and the people of God sing together. Amen.